All righty. Hurricane Helene made landfall yesterday at about 1110 in the Big Bend region of Florida. A little bit of history about that. Helene is the strongest landfalling hurricane in that area of the United States. Now, it was a Category 4 with winds of 140 miles per hour and pressure at 938. Now, this is the strongest hurricane again to hit this region. The old record was set way back in 1896, and it was a Cedar Keys hurricane with 125 mile per hour winds. If you remember last year, Hurricane Idalia made landfall in a very, very similar location with winds of up to 120 miles per hour. And again, records date back to 1851. So it's been uh, standing for over 120 years. And another fact to throw out there, Hurricane Michael that made landfall in uh, the Panhandle back in 2018. That was the first major hurricane since this time. So the last couple of years for the Panhandle of Florida has been very, very active. The latest advisory on Helene right now has been downgraded to a tropical storm, 70 mile per hour winds, but moving forward at a quick and rapid pace of 30 miles per hour. So any winds that we do have, you can go ahead and ramp on 30 miles per hour of wind additionally. So gusts are likely close to 90, possibly even 100 miles per hour because of that forward momentum in the northeast quadrant relative to the storm. It is expected to move uh, rather quickly across parts of the southeast and eventually get into the Ohio and Tennessee River Valleys. But the biggest flood threat is by far across the southern Appalachian Mountains just to our south and west. Do want to talk a little bit about power outages. We do have over 1.2 million customers without power in the state of Florida, with that number also rising in the state of Georgia. You see down there in Tampa where they didn't even have a direct landfall, almost 100,000 people without power. 90% of uh, Taylor County is without power where that storm made landfall. Tallahassee has about 60 to 70% uh, without power. Jacksonville, 120,000 customers in Savannah, Georgia, 100,000 customers currently without power. And we can see the direct path of Helene as she continues to build off towards the north, northeast at that rapid pace. But these purple areas indicating 90% or above uh, power outages percentages. So going to continue to track uh, power outages across the entire of the southeast also tracking some really impressive rainfall totals within the last day or so near Apalachicola nine and a half inches of rain Taylor County about five inches of rain building through parts of Columbus Georgia four to five inches of rain into Charleston about five or excuse me close to 12 inches of rain so some really really heavy rainfall totals building up we also still do have tropical storm warnings in effect highlighted in blue for the majority of Georgia South Carolina even getting into Tennessee and North Carolina. For us here at home, the biggest threat by far is the flooding concern. Because of the last couple days, we received about four inches of rain two days ago in a 24 hour period. Yesterday, we had on and off rain across the area. Tuesday, we had an on and off rain across the area. So we ha have had anywhere from two to six, possibly even seven inches of rain within the last three days or so. The tornado threat is also very high as we're going to be on the dirty side of the storm. We'll also see wind gusts close to tropical storm force, and then we'll also see power outages as a result of the saturated grounds and the winds following knocking out some trees. Now we are still dealing with some widespread light to moderate rainfall out there this morning. We do have a lot of flash flood uh, our flooding advisories in effect. We also have an aerial flood watch in effect for all of Southwest and Central Virginia as we are expecting some really heavy localized rainfall starting in about the next hour and a half to two hours from now. By 8 a.m., we're going to see that some of those heavy rain bands start to build in. We see the deep pockets of pink and purple here near Raleigh that are going to continue to build off out of the south and east building into our region. This is where we could see some of those rotating storms develop as we get into the later half of the morning and the early afternoon hours. Chief Meteorologist Jeff Hanowitz will be here around that time. So if anything does go south, you'll be uh, plenty covered. By 9 p.m., things start to clear up, but we're still going to be windy. And again, the flash flooding risk for today is in a moderate category. That's a level three out of four. A high risk is in place for parts of Grayson County. So Weather Authority Alert Day in effect for today. Rain chances uh, diminish fairly well tomorrow, but then they return Sunday and Monday.